after the YouTube video stuff, there was a producer in LA who saw one of my originals that I posted on YouTube and he hit me up and said, hey, I'd really love to make this song into a dance remix. And it was like me sitting on my guitar with my little silly beanie with my Katy Perry and Adele <laughs> posters in the background going, she's everything, everything I'll never be. <laughs> and so he made it into this hardcore banger. Um, and it turns out this guy, um, his name was, or his name is Dioro. Um, and yeah. Dioro uh, did that Five More Hours song with Chris Brown. And so around that time, Dioro um, was, yeah, hitting me up and we were making songs together and I was sitting on my couch and recording dance bangers and vocal melodies to his dance beats. And then he ended up going, hey, like, I really want you to write for my album. So he uh, flew me over to LA and I was there for a month writing music with Dioro and he um, said, you know, I really want you to move here and so I was going around and looking at houses and he bought me a MacBook while I was there and wanted to set me up with a studio and I had um, people looking over contracts for me. I had um, Chris Brown's lawyer looking over contracts. It was so silly. <laughs> he must be pretty good. Yeah, he'd have to he'd want to be. Um, <laughs> so anyway, spent a month there writing music and I was so naive and so innocent. I was fresh 18 with – with so many high hopes and I flew back to Australia because, you know, your time lapses after a certain point of being in America and you have to come back. Um, and I got back and then I got ghosted and I never heard from them again. And it's funny because when you're young, you, you are so green and you, you have the whole world ahead of you and you think you trust it, everything that people say. And so you get, you have this massive high where people are saying you're going to be a star and we're going to make you into a star and then you get back home and it doesn't happen. And so mm. that, that's what happened to me when I was, yeah, fresh 18 and I think since then, God, this has turned into a therapy session, but um, I, <laughs> I, I I think since then, you know, you realise that you can't trust everybody and that uh, things don't, like when something's too good to be true, it probably is. And so I've kind of approached life since then with that mentality um which it, it sucks and I think I'm I'm coming to the realization now that you know I'm getting that um that little sparkle back and you know th things can be good and they can come true again and I'm I'm trying to embrace that but yeah it's it's a hard thing to go through as a as a young 18 year old who thinks that everything's going to happen for them and then it it doesn't and music was always my dream like to be a pop star and to be on the global stage and that felt to me like something that kind of was taken away from me in a way. Yeah. That's kind of, that's I didn't know that. I, didn't I, you? I knew you did this this I didn't I knew you did the song with Diora. I didn't know that you got back and they like yeah. I I don't know why I'd never wondered about what ha had happened there. And I guess it's it kind of does suck because as you said you were fresh 18. That was your first real experience in the music mm. industry. And you yeah. look at other artists and you just assume that that's how it happens for them so you you feel like you're on the right path you're like this is this is how it happened for Katy Perry this is how it happened for Justin yeah. Bieber this is and it's happening for me and mm. then yeah you get back and it's just like fuck no that's that's not like yeah how yeah. how long did you how long did it take you to realize that uh oh, that they they're not interested in, in me anymore I better just like let this go um it was a few months it was a few months where I was like hitting them up saying like oh when am I coming back over and then it yeah, it didn't happen. Um, and then it just, yeah, continued no email responses. And I'm like, okay, this, and you know what? There's a lot of shame and a lot of embarrassment that comes with that because, you know, my parents are back home while I'm in LA telling all of their friends and family that like Maddie's going to make it big and she's in the rooms with these amazing people and songwriters and producers and she's having meetings with Steve Aoki's label and blah, blah, blah. And mm. then, then you get back and everyone's like, wow, like when's that happening? And you have to go, oh, fuck, like it's it's not. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, that was like a, a weird time in my life and I think that spurs up a lot of like um, I guess that's I think that's when I realised, oh, wow, like feeling down and feeling sad for long periods of time are a thing for me and that was maybe my first time where I really felt a dip 
and I was down for, a, yeah, quite a few months, maybe even a year. And I think <laughs> depression, <laughs> that was like my first real experience with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Could also have been because you were stacking shells at JB Hi-Fi. Oh, God. Oh, God. Five <laughs> years of JB, baby. You've done it again. Me in the musical instrument department. Oh, God. Oh, what, good. what a great time in my life. No, I love that job. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It was a good- all, oh, yeah. You always think back to your first job. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah stacking, stacking shelves at JB. God, what a time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, like, how, do you, how did you pick yourself back up and go, I'm still going to pursue music? Because you're still doing it now. And that was like yeah. over 10 years ago. How did you sort of get back on the, band, on, the, on the horse? Well, I remember when I was in LA and um, I met this really beautiful, amazing person named Kara and she was writing on dance music and she still is and she's doing really really well for herself um but she said hey you can't just always fly to LA and come to America when you want to write music you have to do it when you're back home too and so I hit up (laughs) it's so funny talking about this I feel like I've lived a hundred lives but I hit up Mm. um a girl named Maribel who I ended up dating for three years um Mm. but (laughs) I knew that she was writing music back in Australia and I'd seen her um on Facebook and YouTube doing the YouTube covers when I was doing YouTube covers um, and I knew that she was writing in songwriting rooms. So I hit her up and said like, hey, like when I get back, I'd really love to work with you and I'd really love to make music with you. Let's do that. And so we met up when I got back and she had just started a publishing company um, which is, yeah, where she publishes other people's music and she was setting me up in rooms with songwriters and Um, I got to write with some cool people and then I got my first ever songwriting cut on a song um, where I was, yeah, co-writing with other people and it wasn't my name on the song because I I feel like a lot of people don't realise that, you know, it's not just the artist. Like Dua Lipa has a whole team of people behind her writing songs with and for her and there's a whole team of producers and people who master the song and people who mix the song even um so I was one of the little fine print names as um writers on on a few of these songs and they started to come out and I'm like this is sick like I don't have to put my name on stuff I can just like be in rooms and be creative and not have the whole pressure of being the artist that's cool I'm gonna keep doing this um so I had some like good little sick successes with songs and there was a song um that I co-wrote with Maribel um for Young Franco which uh ended up like doing quite well in Australia and it got synced to a an ad in America um and it made me a, like a little bit of money and um I feel like when that check came through and I told mum and dad about it they were like oh shit like you can make money from music and that's yeah. when they kind of went <laughs> like I think you're probably onto something. Like it, it made yeah. it real. It made it real for them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like where this this music continued. And then, I mean, now I'm making music as jeans. Um, that kind of came about because uh, I was moving to Townsville, and I was like, I can't be in songwriting rooms anymore because I don't know what the music seems like up in Townsville. So I started the the music project and the artist thing because I was like, I have to do this on my own now. Um, so now mm. I'm still making music, doing doing the things. Yeah, you, you always rebuild from from the, the shitty times and you make it work. 